Hi, Judy from Witch Peacecraft. Welcome. This is a bit of a mishmash of a video. I have some happy mail, some finished objects, and talking about my market prep. So, let's get started. I'll start with a happy mail and finished objects, and then if you're not interested in the market prep, you can move on. But I really appreciate you watching the video to the end because it does help my watch hours. So today, I, for the last few days, we've been trying to mail something off overseas and it's been difficult. And I hadn't received notification from the post office, but I went today and then realised I can't do it till Monday now. And there was a parcel there for me that I didn't know about. And it was from, and I've taken it out of here, the lovely Barbara Linehard in Florida. She has pre-sent me my birthday present. My birthday is in the first week of May and she's very well organised. So I've opened the card. Isn't that beautiful, all those flowers? Happy birthday. May life simple bright pleasures be yours to enjoy. That's a really lovely sentiment. Love the card. Now... I'm not going to open it all. I'm going to save some of it for my birthday, but I will open one because Reeb said I can open one. So, sorry about the crackling. In this one, of course, I'm going to open the biggest one. And I did open it earlier. I couldn't resist. It's been such a rough day at work, just so busy. So happy birthday, paper. Just put that all down on the floor and in this plastic bag is a tote it's a beautiful tote this is a handmade tote by someone I have to have a look and there are four balls of Heartland yarn premium acrylic in the colorway gateway arch all the same color Four of those in Heartland. Oh, this is such beautiful soft yarn. I do like it. And there's a lot of meterage. They're big. They're 142 grams and there's 230 meters in each ball. And there are four of them. Now, who's? There is no name in the tote. This is a handmade tote by someone. I wonder if it's Ella from No Catchy Name. Barbara, you'll have to let me know where you found the tote. It's gorgeous and with my favourite colour, orange. Lots of flowers. That's really pretty. Love that. So that's the one I am opening for today to brighten my day. And in here are two other little ones that I will say put away to my birthday for a day when I feel I need a bit of a lift hopefully the last to my birthday I'll put them over here thank you Barbara for being so on the ball and thinking about me I really love the tote it's gorgeous and the yarn now what to make so soft it's like a, a bit of a flecky yarn Uh, it really is nice yarn which brings me to it's not a finished object but last year Barbara sent me premium basic mix in this color and it was the perfect color for a project I had in mind and I started working on it it is an amigurumi project and I have just finished all the pieces but they're not put together that are that's what it looks like made up that's the body so there is a head it's going to be quite a big project and the reason it's taken me so long is the bobble stitch when I saw it I thought oh great but I never realized how much the bobble stitch was going to hurt my hands but every piece is made and yes it's supposed to be open like that for now and I have to find time to put it together carefully because I am not going to put it together wrong 
after all the work I put into it. But yes, this is the yarn Barbara sent me last year. I absolutely love it. I've used a lot of it, but we will see when it's finished. So it's sort of like a whip and half finished. So my finished objects. Well, I haven't got a lot to show you because warning, warning, they're knitted finished objects. If you're not into knitting, these aren't for you. So of course, with an Easter, and I haven't made this for years because I know when I made it a couple of years ago, I made it, this will be the third time, I curse it and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad it's over. And I thought this year would be different. Well, this year was worse, but I have finished it. It does look okay. It is Mrs. Bunny Tea Cozy. Ta-da! There she is in like a purple. It's made in a uh, Marvel Spotlight yarn, 12 ply, 8 ply, 12 ply, and I put artificial eyes. But that is Mrs. Bunny Tea Cozy. Now, these sell really well. It's just a problem pain to make them so you put the apron I don't know I have trouble with the ears and I have trouble with the shoulder frills but there she is Mrs Bunny Tea Cozy now the pattern do I have a copy of the pattern it is a free pattern it's a Canadian pattern and here it is Mrs Bunny Rabbit Tea Cozy um, Canada helps I think it's a it, Terry Fox Foundation which raises money for cancer in research in Terry's name I have designated this patent a free Ravelry download so it is a fundraising pattern for cancer and, um, and usually if I sell them because I do sell them for a reasonable price that money usually gets donated to a local cancer group the profit from that but that is my mrs bunny tea cozy she took quite a while to make most of april and um i had to make the head a second time because i really messed up the first time finished object number one now i'm going to pause the video before i do finished object number two I can't believe the joy I got when I finished this and tried it on. Yes, it's a wearable. I'm truly amazed at how excited and pleased I am with myself for making this. And I do love it. And um, and I was sort of losing my Pro Joe, Knit Joe, the last month or so. I was sort of doing stuff for the market and it was becoming repetitive. But this took a while to knit. It took it exactly a month to make. I'll be back shortly. Yes, I'm wearing a hat. I made my first muscle borough hat. Now, when my hair is down and I have this on, I love it. And I say I don't wear hats because I don't rock a hat. But this looks really good with my hair down and the hat on. And I don't know. I just love it. So I'll come back and give you some details. So the muscle borough, I just love it. I made the small adult size. That's the pattern there. I can't remember if it's a paid for pattern or free pattern. Anyway, the links to all these patterns will be in the description box below this video. But that's it there. So I'll see if I can see any pictures. I've taken pictures along the way. You knit and you knit. The reason I'm proud of myself is it took me three attempts to get the pinhole cast on for the top here, the eight little stitches, and it worked on the third attempt. I'm getting better at that. And you just knit and knit and knit, and it's reversible. So if you were to choose your point, you could have a different color when the brim folds up. You've got a different color brim and you can wear it the other way with a different colored brim. But I just did it in this yarn and I do love this color. This yarn is beautiful and soft and it turned out amazing. When I had to close it, 
on the DPNs with a small number of stitches. It was like, I think Thing came in and said, do you want a cup of tea? And I was like, don't talk to me. And Reeves was asking me, don't talk to me, wait till I finish. And they both waited till I finished casting it off and finished the hat. And they both said when I put it on, it really does suit you. And I did have my hair down. So I'm going to be keeping this for myself. The yarn is beautiful, so, and it should be. Malog Brago Sock Yarn in the colour Lotus. Now this is the first time I've used Malog Brago yarn. It's 440 yards and, um, and I used the 3.75 knitting needle. If I was to make another one for myself, I might go a size smaller. The yarn is from Peru. I bought this when I was on holiday in Victoria. Not last year, year before. When we went to Victoria from one of the little shops there. It's kettle dyed pure superwash merino wool, machine washable in cold water, dry flat. And it even has the price on it. I paid $32 for it. Which at the time for me was, you know, a little getting up there, a little exy. But $32 Australian and Malabrago is just, this is just amazing yarn. It was beautiful to knit with. Don't be my So that's how much I have left from the hank of yarn. Um, it's, because it's sock yarn, it's a four ply or fingering weight. And that will probably go into one of my scrap blankets of the future. It is beautiful yarn it's an easy to follow pattern once you can master the pinhole cast on she does give you videos it's just my chubby little fingers have real problems with this fine bits but I was truly amazed at how great I managed to finish it cast it off on DPNs because I'm not great with those either but Malabrego yarn was absolutely stunning can't say enough about it. I've been smiling all day and I finished it last night. It took exactly a month almost. I started it on the 12th of March and I finished it on the 11th of April. There you go. And that's because I took my time making it. And I have to thank Soxy Nana Alice for her make along um, head, shoulders, fingers and toes because that's what I started it for. I thought, well... It was a Ravelry make-along and I'd try something a little different and take me, take myself outside my comfort zone. And it was her make-along that inspired me to make my first muscle borough. But I can assure you there are more in my future. So guys, that's my finished objects. So, a word from our sponsor for the video. You're going to have a laugh because I laughed at someone today. There is no sponsor. No one sponsors my videos. I don't have Patreon and I don't have memberships for those subscribers who've been asking. Um, my channel is a bit like my craft market. It's an emporium of things. I crochet, I knit, I talk about my travel adventures, I talk about my gardening, sometimes my family and sometimes my charity work. So if you're new to the channel, that's what it's about. My advertisement for Witch Piece Craft is, sorry, I haven't set up Patreon. I haven't set up memberships. Um, I do work part-time and I don't want to do those things until I'm retired and I can dedicate time to doing them properly. I'm not sponsored by any big yarn company, but if it's a yarn company I like, I'm open to offers. I've had offers to become affiliated with other brands and because I don't use them or follow them, then I'm not going to do it. But there you go. To new subscribers, a word from the sponsor, Judy Witch Piece Craft. That's what my channel's about. So if you're not interested in what I'm doing for the market, see you in the next video. But I'd really like you to watch the video to the end, if you could, to help my watch house. The markets. So I've been watching a few different market prep videos. I watched, and hopefully I can say this right, Zadaddy. I think that's how he says it. He is Australian. I'll put a link to his channel. That's where I got the idea for the sponsors video to let people know 
what I do and don't do because he did one. But he makes beautiful plushies. He has patterns. He does videos. And he is doing a big market. And he's done one in the past. And he had some tips for setting up your first market. Now, this is not my first market, but you could always learn along the way. So one of the things I have done is I've done an inventory list. Oops, sorry, not the camera. So basically working out the value of your goods, but I've only done the retail value and I haven't finished. So like I said, my market stall isn't just toys or plushies or household or baby. It is an emporium of goods from tea cozies to tea towels to baby wear to ponchos to beanies to amigurumis. So I started an inventory retail list so far in Amis, Lovies, Amigurumi, sorry, Lovies, tea towels and a few shawls. I think there's three. In retail value, there is $1,963. So what I did after listening to his video, I reviewed my pricing and because I've always had people say you're really cheap and my pricing was very low. I haven't changed the pricing on my tea towel because I think I've got those pretty spot on and they are my number one seller and I don't really want to rock that boat with my loyal people. I have put them up before and that's because the cost of goods went up but I did review my Amigurumi pricing, I did review my shawl pricing, I didn't really touch the lovey pricing because if the stock was old, I thought, well, I'm just going to leave it at that anyway because it wasn't selling at that price. I may have even done a redu uh, reduced it and put a few on sale. So that's what I've been doing. I've yet to do my tea cozies, baby stuff and miscellaneous items. Now, the map and the location of this Sunday's market came out yesterday. I was a little disappointed. I didn't get the stall I wanted. I wanted the corner one, but that was given to someone else. I'm next to it, which means I have to relook at my setup plan, which is something else I said about, you know, look how you set up, what you do. And it's all about enhancing the sales. I want to sell more because I have a mountain of stuff to sell. I'm not going to take everything. A feedback from a friend who I asked last time to look at my stall is less is more. She said you have so much on your stall sometimes it's hard to when you stop to look where to look first. Maybe put out less and then as you sell stuff put a bit more out but probably her positive feedback was and really helpful less is more. I'm obviously putting out way too much. So that's what I've been doing, prepping for my market. Tonight, being Friday night, um, we'll have something pretty relaxed for dinner and I'll probably do my tea cozies. I'll review them. I plan to sell some of them on sale, like have a special because Mother's Day is coming up here. And I usually do sell a few around Mother's Day, but I'd like to offer some at a special price. Some of the ones that I've had for a while that haven't sold. And of course, Mrs bunny rabbit will be up there but she will be top dollar along with a few of the others there's a lot of work that went into her and probably if I sell her she probably will be the second most expensive tea cozy I've sold the most expensive was the cane toad when a lady made me an offer that I couldn't refuse and even one of my bosses said she paid what and I said yep yeah. and I donated that money to charity so as you would know if you're a loyal subscriber, my market stalls are about recovering my costs and any profit I make, I donate to charity or I use for a charitable purpose. And with this work at the moment, we've got a big dinner, testimonial dinner next Saturday night, which is a fundraiser. But I did think one of my bosses who's retired is always making jokes about my crafting. He sends me different memes from Facebook. Um, 
is always it's just and but he's really supportive it's like in a fun supportive way and he does have a testimonial fund so maybe the profits from this market will get donated to his fund which is a education scholarship that we give out every year in his name so yeah that's got me thinking that's maybe what i'll do with this market i'm hoping the last time i had a market with these people it was okay the one before that was absolutely record sales i'm hoping to do record sales if not really good sales equaling the november market so wish me luck i know i have talked about this market i when it came to pricing all the amigurumis i cannot believe how many i have sold or i have made to sell but some of them because they are small are designed because it's school holidays for parents to be able to just spend a couple of dollars to give to the kids and the kids can buy something at the market it's not always about making money for me i've enjoyed making the items it's about recovering material costs and maybe making a bit of profit um, when i retire things might be different i might need to make a lot of money anyway guys that is today's video my muscle borough that really cheered me up after finding out I didn't get the market stall I wanted. I love it and I would make it again. And I really like the Malabrego yarn. So beautiful to work with. So sometimes when you pay for quality, it's worth it. And don't forget, I have used some really, really inexpensive yarn to make a shawl. And it felt just as good as the Malabrego. So it's not always about price. It's all about the feel the touch and the smell of the yarn okay guys until next time which i'll probably give you an update on how i went at my market wish me luck for sunday let me know in the comments below if you've ever made a malabrego or have you used malabrego yarn you know a bit of feedback is always helpful um, when using stuff for everybody using yarn your stock okay take care stay safe Stay well and make sure you have one crafty day. Bye for now.